again and welcome to Man's Talk. I am Tammy Simmons Garthwaite. And I'm Carla Garrick. And okay, we're here. <laughs> we are here and I'm just super excited because my PR lady three years ago, if I'm being probably honest with the time frame, told me you're allowed to push one book for two years and then it's like you gotta, you gotta have go, something right. else right so everyone who's now tuned in or who's watching this later we are ceremonially kind of putting a little pin in the ecstatic pessimist still available on amazon for anyone who wants to go find it this is my current thing so sorry tell me while i take over it's and okay. brag for a second so this is libertarian autobiographies moving towards freedom in today's world uh it's edited by joanne cavallo and walter e block which if you're in the libertarian world is kind of a big deal and um in there and uh i think my essay is really good and everyone should buy the book which costs an arm and a leg but i'm not allowed to say cover, that though. yeah so it's kind of weird because it is palgrave macmillan so it's a real yeah. publishing house and stuff but like you can buy one chapter or you can buy the whole book or uh, you know so i have to go look at what the model is but assuming that there is some way to do a recording yeah. or read reading. it or that something i think i'll do that that would be good yeah, and it's, you know, it's it's booyah for New Hampshire <laughs> and for everything we're trying to do here, which, of course, is spread peace and prosperity for everyone. Yeah. So, it's Wednesday when we tape, in case you don't know that. If you're on Facebook right now watching it, you can figure that out. But, I mean, our show runs at different times, so just know that today is Wednesday. Yesterday was the Manchester Municipal Primary. Primary, um, yeah. Um... We have nonpartisan primaries in Manchester, which is a load of hogwash. There's nothing nonpartisan about it. The only nonpartisan thing is keeping the voters from really easily identifying which party somebody's connected to. That's right. the extent of our nonpartisanship in um, city elections. Republicans are, you know, very re stick together. The uh, Democrats stick together. I guess one difference is if you're registered undeclared, you, you know, you you can you have a better chance of running of getting through. Yeah, you know, you're on the ballot. It's not like it's a Republican primary and a Democrat primary. It's just a primary. Right. But then it's also how strong is your name recognition. Right. So if you're someone so, where, you know, the neither party is talking about you, it, it can right. be harder. Right, right. Yeah. I mean but I mean the reality is is if if we had partisan elections and you were normally a registered undeclared, you would just decide which party you're going to run in and you switch to that. Like, it's not like you Fair can't. Enough. It's not like you yeah. have to pass a test or pay right. a fee or something to register. And actually, um, before well, you yeah. look up the numbers, I do want to remind folks, because I actually just read about this in the Sunday paper, if you want to change oh, yeah. your party affiliation in order to vote in the presidential first in the nation primaries, which looks like it's going to be like, Maybe even late January. It I think might come, the it might come data, forward so. if Iowa keeps playing stupid yeah, games. Yeah. So, so if you want to do that, I think you have to do it in the next. I think it's October fourth or October sixteenth. Yes, yeah, in the next two weeks. That so is for soon. people who want to switch from a party to, to undeclared. undeclared. If you're a registered Republican and would like to vote in the Democrat primary. Then you need to switch to undeclared, or you could go to city hall and switch to Democrat. No, but I mean I'm, I would just right. You know, I'm I'm just saying. I presume people would switch to undeclared. Yeah. Same with if you're a registered Democrat. The other situation is, and you can go online onto the Secretary of State's website and check your registration status because people who are normally undeclared voters who take a um a party ballot in a primary, so maybe in the governor's race last year, um, if you pulled a Republican ballot and then didn't switch back to undeclared, you're yeah. now a registered Republican. So people, if you're undeclared, or I guess if you don't know what you're registered as, you can go to the Secretary of State site, click on elections. There's got to, I, I haven't done it myself because I'm fairly and, confident. And, and the, part of the reason I'm mentioning that is I do know strategically there are people who are thinking because Biden will not appear yeah. on the ballot on the Democrat side because of all the shenanigans yeah. that the DNC, the corrupt DNC is mm -hmm. doing, they... Um, they're going to have to mount a writing campaign in New Hampshire against whoever's on the ballot, which would be someone like RFK. Yeah. So, if, well, and, you and know, Williamson, if you're like, what Marianne Williamson or whatever her name is, I'm assuming she'll be on the ballot. Like it's <laughs> this weird hit piece came out. Did you see no. against the free staters last week? I mean, it's, it's really the ramblings of a, 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 a ramblings. A, a, Let's ramblings. Go with ramblings. Right. So, so, 
And in it, somewhere, that, yes, never mind. I'm not yeah, even going to talk about it. It's annoying. It was great. But, um, so <laughs> yesterday was this, uh, the nonpartisan primary in Manchester. There were only um, four races. So low turnout. So um, actually uh, not. No, it's interesting because you know me. I'm a numbers person. So yesterday there were four races across the entire city. That had a primary. The all as far as alderman races, there was an alderman primary in wards one, five, and eleven. Yep. And then there was the mayor's race, and that's it. Everything else only had two candidates, you know, like or one candidate. Right. So I I felt like I could keep having to preface this, not to be a buzzkill to the Republicans <laughs> who are super excited that Jay Ruay got the most votes in the primary. It's like because the others are split three well, ways. Well, he also <laughs> got like under 42%. Yeah. So that means the combined Democrats who will unify together, they got like more than 58%. So, you well, know. That, so to be fair, I think that it actually puts us as, at a good benchmark for people who do want to see change in the well, city. Well, that's right? the answer. So so that's because a very Kavanaugh yes. I was is, gonna say. Here's it, my pitch: is I mean, he's 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 been there for eight years. Kevin Kavanaugh problems, has been an problem. alderman for eight <laughs> years. If you are happy with what the last eight years has done for Manchester, then by all means, you should be voting for more of the same. If you think the schools are a mess, if you think crime is out of control, if you think the homeless situation is not being addressed well, if you think property taxes have gone up too much, if you think city services are declining, everything. Quality of life in Manchester, if, if, unless you can honestly with a straight face say, I think it was, I think it's been wonderful. You probably should be voting for some sort of change, in which case you should be voting for the Republican, which would be Jay Ruay. So that, that's the big, I mean, I think there is a, if you pit, if I compartmentalize, cause I, oh, this is what I do in my little brain, if, if it was Jay versus June, you know, like what that makeup matchup would be. And if it was Jay versus Will, what would that make? I mean, Jay obviously is completely different than any of the three of them, but I think he is the most different from Kevin Kavanaugh. Of the three. Yes. I mean, Kevin, to me, is just, he's, he's the a rubber stamp union pick. He's he, the union guy. He's I not mean, a leader. Word, word on the street is just, you know, if you if you vote for the union contracts at City Hall, you it's will, like we'll a shoe-in, you. you know? So, so uh, that doesn't really seem I did, <laughs> ethical yeah. either. I did go opinion. back and... um. So I went back, because I'm always curious. Because I'm like, I don't want to just be like... So I did pull stand for Andre for yeah. probably three ish hours yeah. yesterday. So what was it like in your ward? It felt really slow. To yeah. Be well, honest. I mean, it was. So uh, um, talking like about by, we we I was there. Low turnout. Right. So I went back and I looked this morning. I was looking at the last five city elections, and then I went back and looked at 2005, which was the year that Frank to beat Bob Baines. Okay. Because that's a that's a that upset a victory, yeah. right? So. This is unofficial number, so the, this will actually go up a little because blanks and write-ins are not included in this number. Um, 10,308 people voted yesterday. Two okay. years ago, 10,460. Okay. Four years ago, 8,832. 8, 2017, 11,134. Hmm. Um, before that, 12, 12,290. And the year that... Um, Ginta won was in the primary, this is, was only 9,579. So what what I take away from that is Ted Gatzis was very good at driving out votes. Yes. His years have the highest vote turnout. So that's interesting, and which doesn't surprise me because he was very good at but He's the, a data the, collector he, right. and a data and, guy, right? And he so. would push um, absentee ballot. Like, he had a strategy. Right. There's the guy's a strategy. I mean, so, so by way of example, in my ward, hmm. so Ward 11 on the west side, yes. there were only 19 absentee ballots yesterday. But, that, which that, seems low. Which is ridiculously right. low, so in my opinion. Did none of the mayoral candidates push for absentee ballots? So, so it doesn't look like they right. did, but that's perhaps you know a strategy to think about in, in future elections. Mm. But also, I heard a very wise thing. We might even have mentioned this on the show before, but Democrats chase... So, so Republicans chase votes. Yes. And Democrats, Democrats chase, chase ballots. 
And that is Making a sure. very different mm -hmm. mindset. Yeah. Because if you're chasing a ballot, you're thinking about who can I put a piece of paper yeah. in their hand well, now like, so that I benefit. In I two was weeks just time. saying to Dan, so I can guarantee. Well, I can't guarantee. I would <laughs> presume that in this November's election, about 400 homeless people will vote in Manchester. That'll be, be interesting. Because the Democrats will make sure that those 400 people vote. But then I'm like, why don't we preempt them? And why don't we go get the well, 400 Well, And then, and then I, that got me thinking. And I'm like, and I'm should, like, here's a Narcan. Well, so let's, oh, you know, that's probably people, illegal. No, don't do so, that. So, um, yeah, that's, <laughs> I can't do that. So, but when you think about it, so I, because I asked last year, I'm like, so where do homeless people vote? And it, they basically pick where they vote. And I'm not sure that that's really equitable that seems a little sus well, because remember that year where i ran against some guy and i literally won with like 30 votes or something in a well, primary but i'm just saying like okay so let's you know you're joe homeless and you stay at the shelter which i believe is in ward three okay fine that's one thing but if you're joe homeless and you camp in a tent wherever you can find space and it varies from week to week month to month that's a whole different conversation should you be able to just decide which ward you want to vote in? Or well, also, are you deciding? Or is someone like, else you deciding? Know, or is somebody saying, come on, Joe, we need you ward. to go over to Ward 4. Yeah. So part of me thinks that um, much like um, overseas, people who live overseas mm -hmm. and vote, they can only vote in federal elections. They can't vote in local because they don't live someplace. Oh, interesting. Right. So you, that's why on the checklist you'll see federal ballot only. It's usually um, people who work for the government overseas. Hmm. Um, so should maybe homeless people should only be able to vote in citywide elections since they don't have a domicile. I, I mean, you just, know. It, and I mean, I'm sure somebody think I'm an awful person for saying that. I'm just saying I can't decide that I live in your ward. I'll stay at your house for a few right. days. Can I, mean, I decide so, it? So maybe it sounds nasty, but really here's the point Tammy's trying to make is why have we created this system where th the exceptions are actually made for the lowest contributing yes. factor, right? right? So it's kind of like, well, why does this person get extra special treatment? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's it's well, kind of like last week when we said with the cease and desist letter right. from the AG's office, right. right? Where it's like, well, you broke the law, but don't well, do it and again. why don't it's I these mean, exceptions what about for certain groups, but the rest of us are all expected to comply with whatever the rules well, and, are. Well, I mean, there's people who own property in different wards. So wait, so you own property <laughs> and you pay taxes in a different ward, but you can't vote right. there. So it's it's interesting, which makes me think, and I know you want to go into no, the okay. definition of vagrant, but yeah, before we get to that, I'm watching. Um, we. Uh, with the right to know work that I've been doing recently, uh, you know, the new rules are coming down and everything. There is this push that is coming from municipal, as far as I can tell. So that's the New Hampshire Municipal Association and, uh, to restrict everything down to New Hampshire citizens. So they're starting to change the rules in the lawmaking up at the state house to say all like right to know. So your right to know what your local government or your state government is up to, which is our RSA 91A, yeah. is now only going to be applicable to um, to New Hampshire citizens. And so the the Rochester so voice, like the union leader couldn't request. So the Rochester mm -hmm. Voice, which is a citizen's yeah. paper, you know, and it's right. online, and but the guy's been running it for like ten years, and he files a lot of right to know requests because mm -hmm. that's how you have to get police reports right. now and all this stuff. And so the last time he filed one, they said to him, you're I, not, you don't you're, have standing. You're, you're, you don't have standing. And it's like nowhere in the right to know bill or in the, mm -hmm. in the New Hampshire constitution, it, it, it talks that. about, you know, we amended it to include taxpayers. So taxpayers have standing and it'll say uh, the public, which, right, the, which is what it's supposed to be. I mean, that's the point is to be transparent. Yeah. Sorry, my hair is it's doing fine. something weird. Um, and and so I was like, what's That's this interesting. new game? So, uh, you know, I'm well, just seeding it out there. Everyone should start so, looking for it, and maybe we can figure out what the game is. Um, I thought this, you, you might find this interesting. So I was looking at the 12 wards. Now, keep in mind, like I said, um, there were only three aldermanic races. So maybe I should talk about those real quick. Um, in Ward 1, you had, um, do, 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 that's not Ward 1. Actually, I was quite surprised. In the mayor's race, June Trishiani was the biggest vote getter two years ago in the alderman at large race okay she came in fourth 
Interesting. Right? Isn't that weird? Did she lose support because I keep saying her name? I'm sorry, I don't June. know. I just think it's interesting. You like that This is how weird numbers are in politics. Anyways, Ward 1, you had Chris Morgan, who's the Republican. He's the guy who runs the soccer and the base basketball leagues and everything. He's got his picture on, on his signs. Um, he's a Republican. He was the top vote getter. Um, Bruce Kawu, who I think is either the former chair or current chair of the zoning board or the planning board. I think planning board. He came in second, and Kevin Shepard, who was the um, former um, highway department chair chief, um, he came in third, so he's out. Um, in Ward 5, I actually said I think this was the most maybe – ooh, that's different. Um, Kathleen Paquette, who's a Republican, okay. was running against Tony Sapienza, who's the incumbent, uh, Richard Comey, who's a former state rep or current state rep, and Marcus Ponce de Leon, Kathy Paquette got the most votes, hmm. which was 149 or 40.27%, compared to Tony Sapienza, the incumbent, who only got 114. Wow. So I was like, oh, that's an interesting, that just struck me interesting. I mean, it's a lot of work to win as a Republican Ward 5, but yep. maybe Kathy's got something figured out there. Right, um, so good and her. then in Ward 11... Um, Norm Vincent's the Republican. I believe Russ Ouellette and Andre are both undeclared, and Nicole Leapley is the Democrat, and the Republican and the Democrat will go on. So it, was it Norm and... Um, uh, it was... Norm Vincent got the most, Nicole Leapley, Russ Ouellette, and, and Andre. Then, yeah. So... Um, what I did was I looked at the mayor's race, because okay. the mayor's race is in all 12 wards. And to see where Jay did the best... Right. There's a lot of factors that go into it. First, wards one, five, and eleven had a primary. Right. So there was so probably there's, you would think turn there's there. turnout there. Um, ward six and eight are Republican wards. You know things. Right. Um, obviously, he did best in six and eight, which are okay. the two more Republican wards. The next, the third highest is ward ten. That's my ward. Oh. And I keep saying that to people. Ward ten is you is is always right there. But I also know that Jay, or Joy Senecal and Jamar are out there knocking on doors like crazy, even though they didn't have a primary. So maybe that helped. Um, Ward 11 was the fourth best okay. for Republicans. Yeah, that, makes um, sense. that doesn't surprise me either. I keep saying Ward 11 is always a toss up for Republicans to win. Um, then I would say Ward 7, 9, and 5 were all very similar, which makes sense. This one is the one that threw me. Now we're into the fourth tier. Right. Ward 12. 12, 1, and 4 were not so good for Republicans. That makes sense. But 12 to me is that. supposed to be a big Republican. They keep, old timers will keep telling you that Republic, Ward 12 is a Republican I mean, ward. 12 is on the west side. And it's we grown, should, got a lot and, of apartments. And we should actually be able to make. And then t inroads. wards 2 and 3 are just like, forget <laughs> They're about They're down, down, um, a nightmare. They used to be. So a it's just interesting. There's a lot of numbers. Um, is it impossible for Jay to win? No. No, but... Is it really, really... Is it going to take a lot? Yes. I mean, but there's I strategy if, if that could go into... on messaging with it, where I like the way you were framing it, where you're like, look, the, the guy he's running against has been there for eight years. So if you think things have gone in the wrong direction, that's not your dude. Right. right. Ooh, interesting side note. Remember the drama with uh, Scott Adams, right, yeah. with the name calling? Uh, turns out, apparently, he did another show where he, he was like, because the whole fight started because I called him a dude, yeah, I know. right? And so he did a whole show where he was like, dude is sexist, and this is why I broke down, like, went so hard on this lady. And apparently all his, his audience was just like, Dude is, dude is not, not sexist. sexist. It's and just dude. I call, I call both sex dude. I think <laughs> yeah, me dude. Too. I mean, um, it was one of those things when we moved to America. I remember being like, oh, this is awesome. There's this word that doesn't, doesn't. offend anyone that's kind of colloquial. And, and and can we just get back to that? Because I think everyone is so, Everybody's so well, hypersensitive. up. Hypersensitive. I'm going to come back to one thing about the polls, but I do want to say this. So I, somebody gave me grief. I... I sometimes very cl very um, consciously choose my words for reasons. Um, I'm not a big fan of politically correct speech. I believe that, you know, you shouldn't, people should not be offended if somebody uses a word. There's, oh, don't get me wrong. There's a list of words that if you use them, everybody's like me. But 
we but change you should be free to you right oh no suppose. i'm not saying that but you know like, but people are going to judge you right certain certain things right but changing the words we use to intentionally try to change the dynamic of a situation is manipulation in my view right. so i notice it a lot like one time i don't like that we um I, it's not that i don't like i just don't think calling homeless people unhoused yeah, to me, it's a weird word because if I'm going to unbox something, it means to take the box away. If I'm going to unravel something, it's to, to unravel it. Unhoused would mean that I'm taking your house away. Well, maybe there's some truth in advertising, right? There, so, right? so I'm just saying that's a it's an unusual word, but but the reality is is now homelessness has a bad connotation. But the one that I get, and it's not just me. There's I see it often. Um, is like what do you call the people? living on the streets i'm not i think we're trying to change just like we talk about like what during covid with the way they pitch things i think there is an effort to convince more community members that more of the people who are living on the street are just down on their luck and stumbled upon something bad you know like oh they mary was living in an apartment last month and now mary's living on the sidewalk and i actually don't think that that's the case i just don't buy that so if we call them homeless it's got this connotation so we call them unhoused because it makes it sound like they just kind of fell out of their house so what do you call the people like living in the parks right so I call them vagrants. Some people suggest, why don't you call them hobos? And some people call the drug addict, the one taking drugs, junkies. So I use the word vagrant and I really got under some people's skin. And I thought, well, I don't really understand why this is. So I, it bothers me just as much when you're using the word unhoused. Why is that okay that you're picking a word? <laughs> so it reminds me of the time when they did, yeah. I Googled vagrant definition. Yep. A person without a settled home or regular work who wanders from place to place and lives by begging. Okay, so they're vagrants. I mean, the guy who's sitting out here right now in front of the Thai place seems to be without a settled home or regular work who wanders from place to place and lives by begging. He is a vagrant by definition. But I'm, here's the thing. They don't want to talk about definitions of words. In order for society to work, you need a dictionary. You need a common commonality words mean, words mean things and the more clear we can be about what we're meaning the better communication we can have so that we can solve problems here is the tell when you meet people who are making up new words or being like no we can't call it this anymore let's call it this that is actually a tell that should prime you as a like what are you consumer trying of right. life to be like why are you doing well, this, right? So or, uh, it's either fraud or right next to fraud is manipulation, which is kind of next to persuasion. And it's a fine line. But one of the tells is if it's these new words that, uh, or when they <laughs> claim the word, like classical liberal, yeah, li like right. liberal that became tainted with communism and everyone just kind of accepted it, we have to keep the language. So I was reading an article because you know you're googling and things are there, and it was there was an article, and I'm like, okay, I'm gonna go read it, and I browsed through it. I didn't have time, but how we talk about homelessness, homelessness, and why language matters, and there was a thing in there about why they use homeless and unhoused and whatever, and then I'm like, so who wrote this? And this just cracked me up because again, so and so is a writer, an urbanist, pas and urbanist, passionate about public space historical memory, and transportation equity. <laughs> okay. Scooters! What? That's everyone. what it was. I had, uh, Dan goes, what is, what is transportation <laughs> equity? I'm like, I don't know. So then I did read the second sentence. Prior to joining, she started and managed a farmer's market and worked as a transportation planner in the bike share industry. Transportation equity, to me, that's a bit of a stretch. That makes it sound like only certain people are allowed to tra <laughs> to move from place to place. It's just silliness. Oh, my God. So, None of it makes um, sense anymore. It's hilarious. I'm going to try to get this on the phone while I can. So speaking of vagrants, so there's a camper down in um, Piscataqua River Park right now, or was this morning anyways. And yep. I, I noticed if you if you use the click fix click see click fix app you also um can see on manchester connect where, where all these things are being um 
a drop, like, drop. Like, like who's dropping, dropping it? So yeah. I've noticed they bubble up now. So I'm like, oh, this is interesting. So I the, somebody reported it yesterday, and then somebody reported it again today, and it said um, they're blocking the entrance to the trail with the camper, and they got the person was got the bejesus scared out of them because they went in to use the porta potty, and they came out, and this guy was like right there, and, and said he had just gotten out of jail, he didn't have any money, and could he bum a cigarette? And I'm uh-huh. like this. Mm, vagrant. I'm going with vagrant. So, and I was thinking about this. We talk about the people. They try to make it sound like there's all these people who are just missing housing, right? Okay, well, then I have a proposal. I think Manchester should lift the restrictions on boarding houses and rooming houses. Yep. All zoning. Let's no, try it. No, let's just, <laughs> if you have a house, uh, if you own a, th- you don't have to live there. I'm just saying, if you own a house and there's three bedrooms in it and you want to rent that to three different people, Go at it because maybe if there was smaller units of housing available, which we used to have, I live next oh, to a grandfathered say. boarding house, and you know there's two apartments and I don't know how many rooms, and they have shared bathroom and shared kitchen, all that, whatever. Maybe if there was more of that, just like there's more sober homes. I got to thinking about what Victoria and Brittany are working on with the Freedom Movement in New Hampshire, and they're going to take 25 men who came out of rehab and keep give them some place to live and help them. But then I was like, okay, but that's somebody coming out of rehab. What about the person who maybe is just homeless? Where, what's the move for them? And I'm like, oh, they should just move into, oh, never mind, we don't allow boarding houses. Well, and that's part of it is this, we won't allow. If you actually give people enough freedom, the market sorts things out yep. because someone goes, you know what? I, I could, could rent, rent my bedroom. my basement yep. out for 400 bucks. Yeah. I'm helping this guy out. Maybe he'll cut the lawn yeah. and you trade something. But we have moved away from that because the government claims they're the only people who can solve problems. Well, they have to protect us not. from ourselves. So. actually so anyways that's that um so i'd be interested i think i'm going to start pushing the whole maybe we need to lift the um especially you know and if it's people in in cushy neighborhoods are concerned about it okay well then let's just lift it in wards five seven and nine or five seven and three i mean where there's dense ho- den- housing. housing density it's already there i mean maybe maybe yeah. I, I don't mean, know i think it's let's, worth a conversation let's pick a zone and and test it. And I mean, maybe we give them a tax break for making their room how keeping up decent rooming houses, right? Yeah. Like you rent your your multifamily house by the room, we'll give you a little bit of a tax break in this zone, but you also have to keep your property nice. I don't know. Let's something. try something because what we're doing ain't, ain't working. working. Anyways, that's all we've got. Um, nice weather for the week. Let's hope that it stays nice in like in the seventies for another what eight weeks? Yeah, I'll, I'll go take with eight it. Weeks. All okay. right, thanks guys. Bye.